VAT free silver in the United Kingdom is at an end and I've seen a lot of very questionable solutions bandied around from outright smuggling to the use of different import tariff codes when you buy your silver from abroad. All of these are not sustainable. There are a few different options that are sustainable that I can foresee for UK buyers of metals. One of them is gold. The other is buying silver second hand. And in today's video, we're going to debunk all of the stupid smuggling suggestions and also talk about the sustainability of a second hand silver market and how I think we as UK buyers can continue to accumulate metals in the years ahead. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for what is now my third Brexit Fallout ranty moany video. Although today we're going to be doing a little bit less ranting and moaning and a little bit more examining of some of the potential solutions that are out there for still being able to get decent priced silver here in the United Kingdom without VAT, you know, avoiding this additional 20% hike on our beloved silvery metal. I have seen a lot of different solutions bandied around on different social media platforms and we're going to address some of them in this video. Smuggling, that is just an easy one to address, we'll get to that. 5% VAT on collectible numismatics, that is something that is potentially usable. It's something I've actually used in the past on different coins that have been imported into the UK, but it's not something that can be applied everywhere. There are also people suggesting using the Northern Ireland border or just moving to Northern Ireland and buying silver there. And then just generally the mismarking of import documentations and having things sent to the UK, under declaring them, things like that. There's one thing that the vast majority of these have in common with the potential exception of the 5% VAT one is that they're all blatantly illegal. Um, so we are gonna address all of those here today. And then at the end of this video, I want to talk about what I think is the only sustainable solution. In fact, there are two sustainable solutions. One of them is gold, we'll get to that as well. But one of the best sustainable solutions that I can see is going to require a business in the UK to step up, or a dealer in the UK to step up, or just somebody to take up the mantle of buying and selling secondhand silver. So lots and lots to get through in today's video. Now, I do wanna put my usual kind of disclaimer here to say that I am not a financial advisor or anything like that. I'm just a guy who likes to talk about shiny things here on YouTube. So any financial decisions you take having watched this video are yours and yours alone. I'd love to know your opinions as well, so please feel free to comment down below in that comment section with your thoughts on the situation that we find ourselves in here in the United Kingdom, or if you're a business abroad selling to the United Kingdom, I'd love to hear from you as well, because a little follow-up from the last Brexit video, I am already seeing news reports of different countries around the world, different companies in different countries around the world, just flat out refusing to ship to the United Kingdom, which impacts, I guess, our first little question, which is gonna be around uh, the mismarking of import documents. That's probably going to be uh, one of the most commonly used methods by which people can try and cheat the system, so to speak. Now, I do wanna point out that that is completely uh, illegal to do. You are very much putting yourself in legal jeopardy if you do that. And a lot of people think it's the responsibility of the seller to put on the customs documentation, the correct numbers. Uh, and to a certain degree, that's correct. But legally speaking, the actual responsibility lies with the importer. And goodness, you know, if you actually get found out, if there's a paper trail, an email trail, that you've messaged the seller, whether it be private or through a business, it's less likely to happen with a, a sort of a registered business seller because they've got obviously a lot more to lose. But if you just buy from a private person, uh, you know, abroad and you actively, you know, under declare or just misrepresent what it is on your parcel, what is in your parcel, that's fraud. That's actual like illegal, you know, illegal actions there that will get you in some serious hot water. So just wanted to sort of debunk that one straight off the bat. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, uh, you know, you can under declare in terms of a collectible numismatic. You could put like the pandas, which go at a premium. You could put them at just what their raw metal price would be. That's kind of morally gray because again, you're paying a certain price for an item and you're not declaring what that is. And I think that's certainly legally gray at best. Um, now in terms of that collectible numismatic, it does bring me on to the second one there, which is around 5%, uh, well, 5% VAT is the actual uh, a number that you can claim for collectible numismatics. Now, the definition of what is a collectible numismatic, that is going to be the key definition here. And I've seen a few people 
quote uh, the Royal Mint's website saying that the bullion coins that it makes in denominations of uh, 2, 5, 10, or what was it, 5, 10, 50, 5, 10 20, 25, 100 pounds, uh, you know, those are collectible numismatics and they, you know, are such. And that's the evidence that you will need to claim that it's 5% VAT rather than 20% VAT. Now, so that's a fundamentally flawed argument for a number of reasons. One, that HMRC article that a lot of people are referring to is uh, not referring to bullion grade silver. It's referring to those, um, you know, 20 pounds for 20, uh, 20 pounds for a 20 pound coin that's made of silver. It's only got about eight or nine, 10 pounds worth of silver in it. So, there's a bit of a kind of misunderstanding there from that side of things. Also, what constitutes a collectible numismatic is another question in its own entirety, or I think in the actual terms of the VAT code, it's around um, what is deemed a, a coin of numismatic interest, I think is the phrase. Uh, so what is a numismatic interest piece? Is it an ancient coin? Is it an old coin? Is it uh, even a precious metal coin? You know, it could be anything that is numismatically of interest. And some people might argue that it's going to be, uh, you know, any piece of bullion that's a coin is going to be of numismatic interest. Now, I can't see that flying really for bullion grade stuff because you know, these things are minted in the millions. Some of the more limited edition pieces that perhaps come out of places like the Perth Mint, uh, let's take an example, the Phoenix and Dragon here. Um, yeah, you could probably argue this one and have a, certainly a better case to put forward to uh, the customs and duty man than just a bullion grade piece of silver. Now, this one is one that I would say is yes, 100%, you'd be able to get the VAT at 5%, not 20%, because it's got a mint error on it. You see this shiny piece of metal behind the Phoenix's head just there. That is a mint error, and that is definitely a coin of numismatic interest, in my opinion. Now, it is going to come down to opinions, though. That's the whole point. When you import this stuff, at 5% VAT, it is very likely that HMRC will disagree with you when they see what it is you're trying to import and they will then try and impose the 20% and it is then your responsibility to provide them with the evidence by which they can reverse their decision. So it's one of those things where you can try it, but again, if you falsely represent what's in there or if you're trying to very much sort of do one over on the system, it's very likely that you'll A, fail, and B, potentially face ramifications. Now, if you've got a reasonable, I guess if you've got a genuine, genuine reasonable expectation that what you're trying to uh, import is a collectible numismatic or a coin of numismatic interest, then you're less likely to get in legal trouble. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen there. But honestly, it is just not worth trying to get bullion grade pieces of silver through customs with the 5% code under numismatic interest when they're just bullion. It's not, not going to work at all. The next one is kind of on the same track as smuggling. So smuggling, let's just address this one. First of all, smuggling is illegal. Smuggling is bad. Smuggling has been illegal for a very long time. Um, you know, smuggling is not the way forward. But a lot of people have said, why can't we just drive to Europe, buy all the silver that we want, put it in our car, come back over the channel, and Bob's your uncle? Well, if you're not declaring it when you come into the United Kingdom, that is where the offence lies. You can go to Europe, you can buy it, you can store it in Europe, you could you know, rent a house, buy a property or whatever, if you can even do that now nowadays, post-Brexit, and you'll be fine. You can keep that there without having to pay the silver. But as soon as you bring it into the United Kingdom, you will then have to pay the VAT. You'll have to declare the VAT. Failure to do so is the offence. And it's not just about at the border whether you can be uh, stung. It is later on down the line. If, you do, if you're doing this in some significant volume, if you're going over and bringing back you know, thousands of pounds worth of metals and not declaring them. At some point in the future, you can be, could be found out if you sell all of this stuff, especially if you sell it to a dealer and the dealer's a little bit like, where did you get all this from? Have you got some provenance for your purchases? Or if you potentially even get audited from a capital gains standpoint, uh, you know, you're going to get into some serious hot water and that is just, of course, not worth doing let alone if you get stuck at the border. I mean, we can only imagine that there's going to be an awful lot of people trying it, not just on silver, but all different types of goods uh, that they potentially want to look to get hold of now. Because we're seeing, and this is a bit of a follow-up to the previous video, we're seeing now that there are a lot of um, different companies in different countries around the world that are, now, that are now refusing to sell to the United Kingdom. They've just put flat out, you know, bans on imports because of this VAT registration requirement. It's just so burdensome for people that they're just not bothering. They just don't want to even potentially get foul of the UK tax system and completely understand that. I predicted it. A lot of other people predicted it too. It is just, 
you know, it's really sad. We're isolating ourselves from that standpoint. So, you know, from my point of view, you know, this solution of, well, if they're not going to ship to you, then you go to them, you get all of the silver in your hand luggage when you fly back through. It's just not, it's just not legal. It's just not right. It's just not proper. It's just not the way that we will be able to do it. So all of that looks pretty doom and gloom. You know, there, there are not really going to be any options for this. I mean, a lot of people have also said you can buy from the US. It's still cheaper and you can import it into the UK. Perhaps it won't get taxed. There's going to be all of these, uh, you know, so many parcels that they're just going to have to let some of them through. Otherwise, the backlog's going to get too big. Um, if you are expecting HMRC to not want to collect tax in this time that we find ourselves in, then uh, I think you're living on cloud cuckoo land. They are going to tax everything and everything. They're even going to tax imports of gold. I think they're going to do that wrong uh, just so they can collect the tax temporarily and rely on the fact that there are going to be some people who won't uh, you know, claim back any taxes on gold if they actually do it incorrectly. I think that's definitely going to happen. I also think that these uh, sorting centers uh, that are going to be processing all of this are going to be so inundated there's going to be huge and massive delays and also a lot of parcels I think will go missing so I guess my summary here is um, probably best not to think about importing stuff from outside the UK at the moment first of all you're going to put other businesses that are not registered for VAT in the UK in kind of jeopardy or at least put them in a kind of morally difficult question about whether or not they should even be selling to the UK and then secondly you're just putting your own stuff at risk you know with it not being processed properly or thoroughly or it taking so long that it's gone missing you know there's just so many things that could go wrong right now things will settle I think that's important to remember there are going to be times ahead that are unsure but in the end I think things will settle and things will settle into this new norm uh, we'll potentially then see uh, you know a lot of people have said as well there's going to be potential loopholes that come in to these new rules these new systems uh, by which we can then look to get things through the border without the VAT on it I don't know I can't really see how at the moment but then I'm no legal loophole expert. Maybe there will be. We've seen, you know, in times gone by with the uh, margin schemes in Germany and then, of course, the Estonian route with uh, VAT free silver there. There are lots of different avenues by which people can get advantage rate silver. Whether or not we'll be able to continue with that in the United Kingdom is still up in the air right now. So that leads me on to what is the sustainable solution for us here in the United Kingdom. So in my eyes, there are two sustainable solutions for the continuation of buying metals here in the United Kingdom. And I said metals, not silver, because let's face it, gold, it's king. It is the metal of choice. It is going to be the metal of choice, I think, for serious UK stackers of metal for the foreseeable future. Uh, that's because it can be bought at very, very, very low prices compared with silver uh, against spot price. This crew ground is my latest gold edition bought through the Silver Forum uh, at spot, just above, about like half percent above spot price at the time of purchase. But then by the time it arrived, spot price had gone up by, you know, 40 pounds an ounce. So I'm saying here, this is a very, very good lucrative piece of gold that will be very easily sold at a profit at some point in the near future if needed. Personally, I'm gonna be holding for as long as I can all of my metals that uh, certainly in the gold category, you know, a lot of the silver, the collectible stuff or the slightly more weird stuff I'm gonna be holding for a longer time as well rather than just looking to cash out on. I think genuinely that uh, gold is the way forward if you want to continue buying and accumulating metals in 2021 and beyond. Uh, the other solution, and this is the one that I think is going to be a really interesting market for a company, a business, some companies, some businesses in the United Kingdom to try and corner the market on. And that is what is called the secondhand margin scheme. So for those, a very quick VAT summary, for those that don't know, I, I try not to bore you to death with VAT, but VAT is a sales tax that's imposed on the customer by a business that is registered for VAT. If you are buying silver or if buying anything from somebody and they're not charging you VAT, it's because their business is too small to have to register for VAT. And like my own hand-pulled silver business, for example, if you operate underneath the VAT registration thresholds, then you do not have to charge your customers VAT. So that is one solution, yes, but then that prob the problem there is that those um, businesses will still have to pay VAT when they buy the raw material. So if they buy their raw material from the raw mint or from other countries around the world, they'd have to pay that VAT. So the solution here is to have a VAT registered dealer or company or person 
that specializes and focuses solely on secondhand silver because if you sell secondhand silver, if you register it as secondhand with HMRC when you buy it, there's a few different you know, regulations that you have to go through in terms of uh, recording the customer's details, where you bought it, how you bought it, you know, those kind of things. You just have to check a few boxes, do a little bit of extra admin. You can then sell that to the general public without VAT attached to it. All you have to account for is the VAT on the profit margin that you make when you sell it. So if you buy, you know, let's give the prime example right now in the current market. If you are buying at just above spot price, let's um, let's overcut the uh, the bullion dealers because a lot of bullion dealers will only offer spot price for silver that they buy. Let's say you want to try and undercut or overcut them and you offer your prices up at £21 an ounce. Say. All the dealers are offering £20 an ounce. You offer £21 an ounce. People are going to come to you to sell their silver. You'll have stock. You register that as second hand. You can then sell it and you can undercut the, all the dealers sell prices. So you're undercutting these big competitors on markets on two fronts, which gives you more stock to buy and more sales to make and more profit to make. So in my opinion, it is a really interesting and potentially very sustainable business model. The only problem is that to get started in some kind of business model like that, you're going to require a significant amount of capital, especially if you're going to be targeting, uh, you know, General Joe Public as the buying mechanism, or if you're going to be on social media saying, look, you know, I'm, I'm going to be buying all of your silver at better prices than dealers. So if you're considering selling out of silver and just doing it all in one go, I can offer you this price above what a dealer would do. And, uh, and you know, then you go from there. So there are definitely, definitely avenues by which that can happen. And I can really see that being a sustainable and very popular business because it would yield the ability for people in the United Kingdom to buy secondhand silver at a really, really cheap price. And, you know, even from a business perspective, you can still make a really decent, healthy profit on those. You know, right now with the VAT added on top of all of the different silver, let's use the model again of 20, 21 pounds an ounce. You buy at 21 pounds an ounce. At the moment, the cheapest silver that one could buy with import taxes is going to be like 25, 26, 27 pounds an ounce, depending on the type of coin. You can still undercut those prices by quite some considerable margin. And by the way, those prices are if you buy a monster box. You know, it's, it's 28, 29, 30 pounds an ounce if you're buying individual coins from dealers right now. Um, you know, you could undercut those prices, sell, you know, buy at 21, sell at 25, sell at 26. You can still make decent profit per ounce and really have an attractive customer base that are still happy and able to get silver there. The only downside of this business model is that the supply of brand new coins is always going to have a lag because you're going to have to wait for the secondhand market coins to come on. But one thing that will be right, quite nice is that you'll have all of these older kind of coins that come back onto the market. You'll see all of the older, for example, koalas or old Britannias or all different types of coins from Perth Mint or, uh, you know, all around the world. And it can also be applied to, uh, you know, some of the different big bars out there, for example. You can definitely get these and VAT on a big kilo bar. That's a hefty whack. But if you can get these at VAT advantage rates, that is very, very cool. Very, very interesting. And it's a, mo it's a model which I would really like to see happen. Whether it will, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be one of those difficult things where, as I said, it does take a lot of capital to get going. One thing that is sure is that a lot of bullion dealers this year are sitting on a lot of capital. And uh, it is ripe, I think, for one of the big dealers in the UK to step up and realise that there is a market to be cornered. And I think the first one that does that is going to be positioned very well within the UK market to really compete and really take the lead, I think, in the sort of silver market in the UK, which is arguably pretty dead right now. Maybe, maybe there is a potential solution underway. A lot of people are asking, why don't I do this? And it's going to be a lot of work. You know, the, the VAT registration, having been there, done that, it is a lot of work. And if you are thinking about taking up this mantle as a private individual, as a sole trader, or just on your own as a limited business, uh, let me tell you, it's going to be hard. It's going to be lots and lots of hard work. But um, I do think there is this market for people to, to do it. And I think maybe we'll see it at some point in the rest of this year. So that is kind of my summary. Uh, just to kind of conclude then, uh, you know, if you are considering smuggling as a potential solution to continuing to get advantage rate silver, think again, that is not a good idea in any sense of the word. Uh, the 5% VAT rate, um, it's possible on certain things. I've used it on certain numismatic uh, things of interest or collectibles of interest, but 
it's not very reliable for bullion coins or bullion bars. And then just the mismarking of imports, don't do it. Don't tell sellers to do it either. Uh, it's just not good. Make sure your sellers are doing things above board because it's on you that can it can, it can come back to, which is obviously not good. So that is it from me here today. I would love to know your thoughts. I'd also love to hear from you if you have watched to the end of this video, if you're a BYB rambler, then do let me know. It's always nice to hear from you guys down in that comment section. Otherwise, that is it from me. A big thank you to everybody for watching. If you want to see videos like this in the future, hit subscribe. If you've got a particular Brexit fallout topic that you'd like to hear me talk about, then please let me know down in that comment section and we'll potentially add it to the docket. This Brexit fallout series is probably going to ride on for a fair significant amount of time, but it does seem to be an interesting, pertinent uh, topic right now. It's certainly garnering a lot of views and a lot of interest, not just from the UK, but internationally too. So I'm keen to make more. And uh, if you want to see those, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you've enjoyed. Otherwise, have a fantastic week. Stay safe in lockdown. We have now a massive lockdown in the United Kingdom. Again, stay safe, stay healthy, listen to the government advice, ignore the stupid conspiracy theories out there, get the vaccine when it's appropriate for you to do so. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.